this the I'll speaker go. mat? Yeah, that's it. Right. Yes. I got yeah. lentil soup. Did you make it? Oh. I make lentil soup probably every other week. Yeah. Come on. Kate, we are live. All right. Everybody, we are live. It is April the 4th. I don't know how good I have. Did he feel the same way? Good evening. We're live. It is April the 4th, 2024. This is a meeting of the Facilities Committee of the Council Rock School District Board of School Directors. I'm chairing this evening, Ed Tate School Board. And we'll go around the table and people will introduce ourselves, starting at my left. Hi, Tracy Osecki, School Board. Linda Stone, School Board. Yota Pali, School Board. Michael Roosevelt, School Board. Matt Fredrickson, IT Director. Ann Horner, School Board. <laughs> Jessica Binda, uh, Supervisor of Facilities. Tony Rapp, Director of Business Administration. Andy Shanko, Superintendent. We also have with us Joe Hidalgo, School Board. Uh, Nicole Kahn, School Board. Andrea Mangold is with us. And we have a guest, Mr. Doug Taylor of Dewey Engineering. And I will turn the floor over to Jessmine, please. Thank you. Uh, so quick review of our um, agenda items for tonight. Um, so first, we'll be going over the summer 2024 projects on uh, North Nanatorium Boiler, South Softball Field, South Track Replacement, North and South Library Flooring Replacement, uh, Churchville Elementary Clear Story, um, Paving and Concrete Repairs, Newtown Elementary Chiller, and Twining Ford uh, Facade Upgrades. Then we will be going over um, Richboro Elementary School switchgear delivery. Just need to give you guys a quick update about that. The sprinkler maintenance bid, and then uh, Tony will be taking over with uh, building opportunities. So first, I'll be handing it over to Doug. Let me just switch over to his real quick. Good evening. I'm Doug Taylor with Dewey Engineering. I know many of you, but not everyone. So, uh, we've assisted uh, Jess and Council Rock with the summer bids this year. Uh, I'm going to go through the results with you. Um, first, I'm going to start with some adjustments we made to the budget as we develop uh, the drawings based on field investigations and uh, owner requests and uh, some uh, project scope adjustments. Uh, review the bid results, the tabulations that we have for each project, recommendations and project budget, the schedule, and questions. Of course, please ask questions as we go. There's no need to, to wait. Um, so. First and foremost, we have the original budget column on the left. As we develop these projects, there were some changes made to the scope, um, programming, and just some things that we learned in the field so that we adjusted those budgets before we went out to bid. And you can see the construction budget on the right, which is an adjusted number. So the natatorium project with the boiler, we actually moved the boiler from where it was going to be in the pool mechanical room to the actual physical boiler room of the building. So that increased the amount of hydronic piping, uh, some ceiling work, um, venting through three floors to get the vent for the gas-fired uh, boiler through the roof. And we also added a heat exchanger to this project because the existing heat exchanger is pretty tight. So uh, that was a request of the district to add that. So that project increased fairly significantly um, going into the bids. The softball field project was nearly a million dollar project, but when we looked at this, we decided that um, we weren't going to reconstruct the entire field and put new dugouts in and new fencing. Um, we actually <coughs> keeping the field as it lives and putting under drainage in the infield um, and doing some, some improvements to the swales outside of the fence to try to direct the water um, away from the field. So that eliminated a lot of scope, so that reduced by about $650,000 in a budget heading into the bids. And I'll show you what the bid numbers are compared to these budgets. How's that doing now with this rain that we've had? Awful. Okay. Um, all weather track at South, uh, again, that was a budget that increased uh, primarily based upon the condition of the existing track. We did some cores. We learned that the uh, system that's on the track, which is the original system, the original all-weather surface, has uh, it's a one-core system that fully adheres to the asphalt, like 
no other new system does. And when you pull it up, it pulls up actual asphalt beneath it. So even though the base of the track is in good condition, as they remove that track, we're going to have to do about a, a, a one inch milling overlay on the entire track uh, with asphalt before we put the new track surface down. We also have to do some widening of the track because it's not wide enough to really facilitate the new surface without compromising the edge of the track. So we're going to put a two foot width of asphalt around the entire track to make it uh, more structurally sound and um, continue to extend the life of the track surface. And we have some drainage issues around the interior to modify. Some of the existing uh, drain covers need to be replaced and some other repairs. So that project did increase. We also <coughs> added some other ad alternates at the request of the athletic director um, at South. And I'll review those when we get to the bids. The library carpet project stayed the same uh, budget as we went. The clear story at the Churchville Elementary School uh, number stayed the same as it did. Um, the paving project was actually reduced down to about $675,000 based on the scope that we adjusted as we documented that project. And the 24 envelope restoration and emergency generator project grew a bit, um, changed the generation to all three buildings instead of just the uh, freezer units that we were intending to provide generation for uh, electrical panel upgrades and some other work of the building facades, and I'll show you that. In a Last two projects, the Newtown Elementary School Chiller project, we reduced in scope by about $370,000 based on uh, confirmation of the tonnage of the unit that we'd be using. And uh, again, this is a project that is being bid now but not constructed until 2025 because it will take about 52 to 56 weeks to actually procure that piece of equipment for that project. So we're bidding it now so we can perform that work in that next summer. So the original budget was about $6.2 million construction. We reduced it by about 782,000. So we had a budget of about 5.4 million heading into the bids. So as we receive the bids here, you can see the top number on the left, the 750,000 is the adjusted number heading into bids. The actual award for this project for the Natatorium Boiler it's 631,000. So it came in 119,000 below that adjusted number um, that we uh, provided. And uh, again, this project is, is a needed project. This will allow you to, uh, <coughs> to shut down the two primary boilers in the building in the summer and operate the auditorium and the heat exchangers um, in the summer with their own standalone boiler. So, the company that bid the lowest is an asphalt paving company? So no. Um, so I actually talked to the company because I, I, I'm familiar with the company's name. Um, so back in the 70s when the company was formed, they did a lot of asphalt work and they, they combined with uh, me and, I think it's me and an associates. So me and an associates is a mechanical plumbing contractor. Yeah. Well, as the company developed, they kept the name, but they flip-flopped on what they were doing. So they do very little asphalt work and do a ton of mechanical and plumbing work. So it sounds like they do no marketing work because this is a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> so unfortunately, they've kept the name because if the name's established, it, it is what it is. It's they don't want to change it. So so yes, it's okay. they're not a, I just an wanted asphalt to make company. sure that yes. we didn't have a roofer no, doing this. No, or a, 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 a paver yeah. doing this. No, that. no, we do not. In fact, they've done, um, and I actually didn't know this, but they did um, some mechanical work actually under me at the school district of Philadelphia when I was down there. And then um, they've done a bunch of school district work across um, like the five county area. So they are a, they are a mechanical slash plumbing company with an asphalt paving name. That's just a picture of a heat exchanger and, and a independent boiler for the space. So the next project was the South Softball Field Restoration Project. And one of the reasons that this project reduced in scope is that we did a pretty significant project at the tennis courts, where we were basically losing those tennis courts to sliding down the hill. They were opening up and uh, not in great shape. So we actually took those courts out and put all new under drainage under the tennis courts tied into the storm drainage and then put the new courts back on top. So we are actually intercepting a lot of water that used to run 
under the courts, challenge the courts through the hillside and down to the softball field. So as a result, we were able to <coughs> modify the scope. One thing that we're going to do is we're going to further define the swales that uh, were on the outside of the fencing at the softball field, because right now the water, they fill with silt. Um, they basically don't, don't intercept the water, it just kind of travels right past them. So we're going to uh, kind of cut those out and create some berms and further accentuate those and get the water away from the field. The water that gets to the field will be addressed through an under drainage system that will, will add as well. There'll be a series of drains underneath the infield mix, put new infield mix in and uh, clean the dugouts and, and make the area better. A couple little um, repairs to the sidewalk in that same area. So this <coughs> was estimated about 350,000. It came in at 331. Sorry, yes. real, real quick, going back to the first one, I thought that it indicated that a deduct was the underground drainage. Oh. And I thought that I just heard you indicate that you're maintaining the underground drainage. I was gonna ask what's in the project. Is it just regrading to create the swales? Um, but it sounds like it's that and infield yes. underground drainage. Yes. Outfield. Underground. Outfield was removed. It's not yeah, we removed the outfield. We have like one one swatch and then, and then yes. one one okay. yep. But yes. this field is lower than the basketball courts and the tennis courts. So there is there is still water coming down there. Yes. But you feel confident that through the swales and the and the regrading that, that won't get to the field that the infield is largely just going to be dealing and managing the water that it gets from the sky. Yeah, we're not going to we're not going to see the sheeting across the field with the okay. accentuated swells. The, I mean, ideally, that field would have been uh, oriented in the other direction because you don't really want a, a, an infield washing, you know, the outfield washing toward the infield. Um, but again, that would have been another seven hundred thousand dollars to actually reconstruct an entire field, reorient the field. Um, we feel that this is a, a better approach. And here's a, a picture of that softball field. So the arrows at the top left, you can see the tennis courts in the upper left corner, um, a pretty significant slope that slopes toward the field. And then the softball field at the upper right slopes toward the field. And that water then is supposed to be directed around either side of the outfield. Uh, right now, it's just kind of running right through. So we're going we're gonna to intersect that. What kind of slope can you maintain with that, with this regrading? What are you shooting for to achieve? I don't really have the, I don't know what the, the elevations were, but you can see the swale, visually see the swale, but you can also see that it's filled with silt and it, it's lost its right. ability to, to kind of collect water and get it away, divert it. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to take all the excess soils and kind of um, further enhance those. So, you know, that they'll collect the water. I can get you the document and show you what that actually looks like. I just don't have that. I'm just hoping that there's enough topography to do it. I mean, it, it seems reasonable two-dimensionally. Yeah, the, the, there's a low point at this lower left corner where you can see kind of the wetlands area where it collects, and that's below where we cut in. So we have room. We have the dimension <coughs> to get it to that area. Right. <clears throat> the other thing that's not shown here that didn't help is there's actually a large hitting net kind of uh, section that was added to the swale in the upper right field, which is kind of in the swale. Um, so we're going to try to get some water around that as well. And, and the picture on the left is, is you can see the water running from the outfield across the infield. And that's uh, just took that picture after a storm event. I mean, you're, you're obviously going to get some erosion of an infield from rain and natural storm, but this is just a lot of water coming from from other areas, not just the infield. So the all-weather trash project, again, we adjusted the budget to about $1,027,000. The bids came in at $1,095,000, but that includes uh, value-added alternates as part of that project. Um, American Athletic Track and Turf is the company who was the apparent low bidder. They're well known for track work. Um, this includes the addition of replacing the long and triple jump and pole vault and the equipment um, in the D area, replacing the discus pad and the safety and adding safety netting. Right now there's no safety netting around that discus area. Um, 
changing the color in the exchange area uh, for a relay on the track itself so there's a visual um, a visual area we can see where you're going to switch off with, with the person who's receiving um, in the relay and replacing some changes <coughs> around the perimeter of the field. There's a lot of areas of, of fencing that's in poor condition so we're going to um, repair that as part of the project. So all of those things considered, um, you know, we're still in pretty good shape on this project. Joe. Thanks. I, I, I like that track. It's my track. Um, it's when, pretty tight outside of school. I still run it. But um, the whole thing is what about the grades on the drain? The lids are pretty tired. The, 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 so they're the being replaced and they're tired. So it's going to look good. It's going to look great. great. The, the asphalt on the inside lane against that channel drain is uh, has deteriorated as well. So when they pull the track up, they're going to be repaving to against that drain. On as the well. inside of that, so you have the paved asphalt, the, the drain, and then the track. Asphalt with the all weather surface, the drain, and then and then the field. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, but. When we got to put new lids around. The whole I know thing. it's going to look good. Thanks. Beyond its life, right? It's going on. You've got your money's worth out of that field, right? <laughs> 2002, and it's been 22 Amazing. years since that track's been been touched. What is there a track okay. around the stadium? Mm -hmm. Yes. You mean north? No. It's south. We don't have it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes. around, the turf, around the turf. Around the turf. No, there was an option to put the turf field here. No, there's no turf. And then there was an option to build the turf field without having the track around it. And the, the decision was let's put the turf field, let's put the turf away from the track so that there can be two separate events without the interfering of what's happening on the uh, the track and the infield uh, together. We can always put a stadium up on the football field too, <laughs> down the road when we get a donor. Well, we're master plan for a stadium where it is now. Yeah, I know. It's got the yeah. infrastructure, right? It does. Yeah. Oh, the, the new one. So this is an example, Joe, on the left, that, that channel drain you're talking about is in, in bad shape. A lot of those are not fastened and we have to replace those, but there's a underneath that area, the asphalt's challenged. And on the outside, the, the all weather surface is right up to the edge of the paving, but you can see the paving's broken away, mm -hmm. so we can't put new all weather surface against that broken asphalt. So we're going to cut that, extend the asphalt out wider, and then put the new surface. So you'll have a little bit of runoff as well. Great. Uh, the North and South Library Park replacement is pretty straightforward. Um, the library proper both get uh, new carpet tile. Uh, there was an alternate um, for any room that's fed off of the library. Uh, doors into the library with carpet uh, would be replaced. So we accepted that, or recommending accepting that. It's about 30,000 at North and 22,000 at South for the support spaces. Um, we estimated this at 525, it, it came in significantly lower um, at 265. And this is using, uh, um, what's the word for the carpet top? Antimicrobial uh, yes. carpet so that um, it sheds the germs and it's a you know, cleaner and a better product for the library. <coughs> yes. What, what's the price per square foot? I mean, I look at carpet and I'm like, when I first saw the 500, I'm like, you're kidding me. We're, we're going to carpet two libraries for half a million dollars? That's just what we had budgeted. But even still, I look at it as we're carpeting two libraries for a quarter of a million dollars. It just sounds... I don't know what the square foot is. Well, it would be square yard cost is off the top of my head, but it, the libraries are enormous, and carpet is outrageously expensive. And they're working around the stacks, so they're they're going to be cutting around all the stacks, they're going to be putting uh, rubber base around all, all the areas that may not have rubber base now. Um, getting the sheet flooring up, and North has sheet floor, sheet carpet, so they have to actually get that carpet up off the concrete, which is adhered and is a laborious task to get that up. To say the least. Yeah, I just sounds, nice prevailing wage. I, I just saying it just sounds like a lot, especially when you get to your next slide that you're going to show in comparison to carpet. I think what he said was a prevailing wage. Annuity. Prevailing wage is another. You know, unions ninety bucks an hour per person. If you're lucky. So about one hundred thirty thousand per school for a carpet in a library. Not uncommon. Right. I think I did a house for like fifteen thousand dollars. Couple of carpet. Yeah. 
So these are carpet tiles, so I guess if something spills on them, they can just replace like one. Yeah. Or are they gonna peel up? Like I haven't used these, so I'm Yeah, they they can you can they're not they don't peel up just by easily That's my peeling question. them yeah, up. Like but yes. it's gonna like no. you can generally cut an X like in the middle of the one that's challenged and pull it up without compromising the tile around it. Okay, so the lifespan of these is another twenty years or depends on how yeah, years, how, yeah. how badly they get beat up. Because it but, I mean maybe the lifespan is longer because you can just replace the standard can. ones or something. I don't yeah. Know. So the, the contractor is responsible to remove uh, any of the furniture that is in the way of the new carpet. They're removing that from the space and they're working around the, the furniture that has to be moved around. The district's going to uh, disconnect the computer tables, the, uh, the little pigtails that have the uh, power and, and uh, data so that the contractor can then move the furniture. <coughs> the the contractor will put it back, the district will reconnect the power and data at those locations. So the clear story wall cladding at uh, Churchville Elementary School. So there's a, um, let me, first of all, the, the budget was 280. We got a very favorable number <coughs> from Walt Rooker uh, Company who we've done a lot of work with um, of 192,000. And uh, they are comfortable with their number. Uh, this is basically taking care of uh, a brick facade around, um, it's a, a rising piece of brick wall. Uh, beneath it is the cafeteria. <coughs> On the side, there's lower roof areas. And the brick is in pretty poor condition. It's structurally okay, but it, it needs some repointing. It needs some other work. So putting the cladding on it is going to be a more permanent solution instead of going back every couple of years and dealing with this brick veneer. Um, so I can show you what I'm talking about. This is the rising wall. This perimeter of this area uh, will get uh, little furring channels uh, put on the wall. It'll get uh, exterior grade plywood and then it gets aluminum cladded panels to match some of the aluminum that was put on when they renovated the building. For whatever reason, this piece of roof, uh, this piece of wall wasn't addressed when the building was renovated in 2000-ish. Like 2000-ish. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, but the challenge with this is today, this was the 60s, but today they would cut, when that yellow dotted line is, they would cut a control joint in that brick. And you can see this is a perfect example how the building shaded on the left right here, but sunny on the right. So the brick wants to move, right? The sun's making the brick grow, but on the shaded side, it doesn't want to grow. So because it can't move, it just cracks where it wants to crack because it doesn't have the ability to be controlled as to where that would happen. So that's part of the issue. And then horizontally, there's a, a shelf angle in the wall from the roof frame, and that's compromising the brick in the other direction. So we're going to uh, take care of this by putting a nice new finish on it and uh, permanently address it. We'll just jump in real quick. We did get some water in these areas um, over the past couple of days with the wind-driven rain. So this will help with any kind of water infiltration. So the district-wide asphalt paving project was something we were uh, unsure of what the total scope would be, so it was kind of an allowance. We, we took about uh, 900000 out of that number down to 675000 budget. Um, the bids came in at about 792000 with uh, a lot of recommended alternates. And those recommended alternates, some of those were added scope as we developed the project. So. Um, we added an island and a crosswalk at the Goodnow Elementary School project at the sale house. So there was some concern uh, in the past with students and vehicular traffic. This will essentially, when you go in the, the lower end off of Frost Lane into that parking lot, will not allow you to turn right where there's a crosswalk right now. It will actually create a, a concrete curb, another concrete curb on the other side, infill that, uh, put a sidewalk in that will connect the sale house to Frost Lane essentially, and cars will have to come in and go around the sale house to get into the parking lot and into the site if you're entering from that side. So it will allow for uh, pedestrian circulation without the risk of, of vehicles unless they jump the curb, and that's a whole other story. So, um, so that's that's an alternate for that, which we're recommending. Sidewalk repairs and trench drain at Goodno. There's some uh, trench drain that's basically filled to the top with with dirt, it's just an old tire trench drain from many years ago. 
Um, sidewalk repairs occurred uh, in Ballard's at Churchville. We're doing some additional work there. We're replacing some stairs at Churchville and uh, adding a little retaining wall at an area where it's pretty steep, steeply paved by the gym. Um, this, and the stairs are, are a little tired, so we take the stairs out, extend the retaining wall around, and lower the grade so that from a maintenance standpoint, you can easily maintain the, the lawn in that area as well. Um, at Hillcrest Elementary School, there's a piece of brick sidewalk. I don't know if it was intended to be sidewalk, but there's brick pavers at an overhang outside the cafeteria. There's a concrete sidewalk to one set of doors and concrete sidewalk to another set of doors. But under the overhang, it's connected with uh, brick pavers that are irregular and if, if people walk back and forth on those, it's kind of a tripping hazard. So we're going to take those brick pavers out and put a concrete sidewalk in. They weren't replaced as part of that project when we did it. So, so when that school was built, Doug, the parents from PTO would come and put mulch and plant plants in there. And then that group of parents matriculated through the school and got tired, and that's when it became brick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, do we own Midtown Bus Garage or do we lease it? Lease. Yeah, that's what I thought. But we can't get the landlord to do the parking lot. I will say the number's favorable. That's the good news. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, we tried. Okay. But Great. So, so at the Newtown, the last site on the Newtown Bus Garage, when you park in the parking spaces at the front of the building and use the sidewalk to get into the main office, there are no ADA compliant parking spaces there. So this takes basically that area of the parking lot about uh, <coughs> feet by the length of the width of the, it's like 10 spaces, some seven or eight, 10 spaces. Like that. We're gonna basically mill those out, lower the asphalt so we have an appropriate slope for uh, ADA and then put a, uh, a depressed curb in so you can get from a vehicle to that sidewalk and into the building and be compliant. And these are just, this is the area at, uh, on the left at um, Goodnow, where we're going to, you can see that there's some uh, orange cones set up where they don't want cars to travel. But we're going to permanently uh, block that with a new uh, sidewalk across the way and a curb and uh, divert stormwater away from it back to stormwater drainage because there's some issues with it with putting that in and making sure we still get positive drainage. So we, we have a plan to do that. And then on the right, this is the play area where, uh, at Goodnow, where the, um, the snow is pushed across it, across the sidewalk and off the site. So we're gonna, and this drain is basically filled at the top with, with debris, it's pretty bad. So we're gonna replace that trench drain, replace the sidewalk, replace the paving. And we're gonna put a thickened sidewalk in that area since the vehicles travel across it, so we can address that. I have a question. I'm trying to place this, um, and I, I just need help. So at Cano, at this frost lane entrance where parents, this is like the car line, but it also is an entrance where people park to go to uh, Roberts Ridge Park. Yes. So my question is, if you're coming to take your kids to Robert Ridge Park, then to exit, will you be able to exit, I guess, there? Or do, you won't have to go all the way through. Okay. It's, it's still two-way traffic okay. past that. Yeah. It will compromise uh, Roberts Ridge at all. Okay. Um, 24 building envelope restoration. I won't get too into this because I think ultimately this is recommended for um, for rejection. So bear with us with this conversation, you guys. Will as Tony starts talking, you guys will understand why we're not recommending to move forward with us. So just, if you could, just bear with us for a few more minutes. So do we need to talk about it? We will, yes. But once you, once Tony gives his part of the presentation, you'll all understand why we're recommending not go moving forward with it. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> tell you what you're not going to do. <laughs> So um, the estimate of probable cost, we put it about one million ninety-two thousand, and Vic came in at one million seventy thousand. So about twenty thousand under the number that we estimated after uh, the investigations and, and the scope adjustments. Um, TE Construction, who does a lot of work for the district, is the low bidder. Um, he'll be disappointed. 
Um, but I gave him a heads up. But he'll be okay, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, this was to uh, essentially just to clean up the facades of the three buildings that are twining forward. The mason, there are single white masonry walls that are, haven't really been touched since the district purchased those buildings. Um, the windows are uh, single glazed steel frame windows. So this project was replacing those windows with a, an aluminum window system with insulated glass. It uh, was painting the facades. It was putting new roof surface on top of the existing three roofs that are there, um, repointing the chimneys, and uh, and then putting the generator in to address the food service freezer that's there because the district is part of the energy plan. Um, tries to empty all the freezers throughout the district in the summer, centrally locate everything here, and then shut those freezers down so they're you not know, using energy. Um, but they weren't backed up with emergency generation, so power went out in the summer, it was all the food that you put in the freezer. So this was an effort to, to sustain that food. Um, at any rate, we also had some alternates to do the windows in building B and in building C, and if you wanted to do a roof coating in lieu of a new roof sur uh, surface on the roof. So we did recommend the 12,000 credit because uh, I think we're going to go with the, the new roof surface over. Uh, at any rate, um, this is a district decision if you're going to move forward or not. Um, if you do, we still have the numbers. If you don't, no, that's okay. That's an example of one of the chimneys that definitely needs some repointing and some work and uh, a membrane roof that would be uh, covered with a new roof. We'd maintain the existing edging that's on the roof. Um, we're trying to make this as cost effective as we could, knowing that these buildings are not forever. So, um, Newtown Elementary School Chiller replacement. Uh, we reduced that budget, um, and we received favorable bids of four hundred eighty-five thousand from Clifford Pipe Service out of Chester, PA. They, again, they do a lot of mechanical work. Um, this is putting a new chiller in at the Newtown Elementary School. That chiller is very tired. I think it's the original chiller. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's tired, and it's, uh, it could, could go at any time. So we're hoping that it lasts us one more year, and uh, we'll procure this equipment, and we'll schedule this for the summer of 2025. I know you've lost some compressors in it, but you've been kind of maintaining those, so we're just going to continue to limp along and, uh, and do so. And there's a picture of the, of the chill. Now the new chiller will go in the same location, but this fencing will actually be moved slightly forward closer to the sidewalk. Because this chiller was actually tucked a little too tight against the building for an air-cooled chiller, it wants, it wants space around it to get air and ventilation to make it function the way it needs to. And this is underneath the soffit and too close to the wall. So we pulled it out in, in a way um, as part of that uh, new design. I won't get into detail on these other than these are the bid tabs that we had from the bid opening and, and really uh, there were 12 people that procured bids for the boiler and we received five to <coughs> So you can see who bid and, and how close the numbers were. We had pretty good parity with, with some of the lower end. Um, and then we had on this project nine bidders picked up for the for the field. <coughs> we only had one bid and I think it's just the scope of this project is not great. Um, a lot of these site guys are out to a much bigger project. So we did get um, WG Land who does good work. They do a lot of school work and uh, their number is within the budget and it's a project that we really need to move forward with. The all weather track, nine people procured bids. We got four uh, bidders, uh, which was good competitive bidding. We had eight people pick up for the library flooring. We had three bidders for that. And you can see the numbers are all fairly tight. Seven bidders for the cafeteria clear story with uh, uh, three that actually submitted bids. We had 13 that procured bid documents for the paving and six actual bidders uh, submitted for that. And keep in mind, they don't know how many people are submitting when they're putting the number together. So they're assuming they're competing against perhaps the 13. We did get good competitive numbers across them. And the TFR project, we had uh, four uh, possible bidders, three submitted bids. And for the electrical piece of this project, we had six uh, electrical bidders and four actually submitted bids. 
uh, Newtown and Chillum, uh, 14 procured bid documents, and we have six bidders for that. So overall, um, the updated construction budget is on the left. The actual bids received um, is um, on the right with the actual recommended uh, alternates. And you can see um, as we go that we actually uh, did very well. You can see that we had a construction budget of 5.4. Actual bids received were about 4.3. The value added alternates were about 585,000. So the total project was about $4.9 million, including TFR. If we take TFR out, we're looking at um, $3,800,000 worth of summer projects compared to the original budget of 5.4, um, the adjusted budget. So we're in very good shape uh, bidding wise. These are the original budgets. The, the column on the left is from the capital improvement plan for, for 2023 at 7.6. We adjusted that budget uh, down to 6.8, and we're at 4.5, and we're actually about the three that we're taking out 20. And in addition to these favorable numbers, we still have about um, we have some uh, 95 about 900. And $75,000 in allowances and contingencies included in this project. So um, I don't think that we're going to have any issues managing these or adjusting budgets as we go. And hopefully come back to you with some credits at the end. <coughs> From a schedule standpoint, uh, we opened the bids um, the 19th of March. Uh, we're here tonight to review these with you. We'll get the um, contracts over for the 18th um, April meeting and hopefully those will be awarded so we can get the guys started with submittals. Uh, we got the contracts executed first, and that usually takes about 10 days to two weeks once we take care of that in coordination with the solicitor, <coughs> um, get a notice to proceed at the beginning of May. Um, commence with the construction activities in uh, June, late June, after the kids are out of the schools, and finish in uh, August with most of these projects. The pool uh, natatorium project will go a little longer because they have to procure the boiler, which uh, will take a little longer than other projects. So that's a project they can commence um, in June, maybe even earlier, because they're going to be working in the boiler room with uh, piping. And uh, we expect that, and we're, and we're going to uh, work up until 24 July on just piping and things that don't disrupt the uh, programs in the pool. Uh, we worked closely with Brian Johnson, the aquatics director. So uh, 25th of July, this program's over, and then the contractors can um, actually make the connections um, from the piping that they've roughed in to the actual pool equipment and things that they need to do. Um, in July, <coughs> they can complete the heat exchanger in October and uh, substantially complete the project in the beginning of December, and maybe finally complete it, depending on when they get the equipment but no later than a January. That work will all be uh, around um, what's happening with the pool. No one's going to be working in where kids are or working um, or disrupting the pool itself, other than the final um, connection of the boiler, which will work around uh, Brian's program. And they're, they're aware they have to do that. The Chiller, again, is a 2025 project. It's 52 to 56 weeks to procure that. <coughs> So the next steps are basically um, coming to the board meeting to uh, have these projects approved, uh, get the intent to award contracts, bonds, and insurance, and we'll work closely with your solicitor to make sure that we're uh, meeting uh, all of their, um, anything that they might have concerns with. Um, contractors will then commence with their tasks administratively, clearances and submittals, schedule of values, and then we talked about the schedule of work. And then we'll manage these projects through final completion and closing. And that's it. Questions for Doug, the summer project, and So when you talk about the North Pole, when you're saying you already worked it out, that all of the activities that go on there, that is a facility, and there's a lot, we do like to have that. You've worked that out, so the timing is, we're all good with that, right? We are. We talked with Brian, okay. Brian Johnson, um, and we, he has a program through the summer through July 24th. Yeah. I saw that, but I just wanted to make sure because it goes into the fall that those fall scheduling. Yes, yeah, so there's there's no there will be there's no, no scheduling. Um, the only time that 
we could foresee maybe a, a disruption is like when we get the boiler, make those final connections. Um, but if we have to work overnight on weekends, that's what we're going to do. Um, Brian's aware of the whole process. We've met with him numerous times, so um, there, we don't anticipate any interruption in his program. Because he, he expressed how how important his summer program is, so we made sure that you know, we were able to work around him. Yeah. A lot of this is just kind of uh, parallel <clears throat> to what's happening. They don't have this pool heater now, so it's a new heater in the boiler room. It's piping down the hallway, down below, into the mechanical space, tying it into some units. None of that affects what's happening as part of the, and they can bring it up next to the units that they, they get tied into and just wait. And then when uh, the program's over, then we can turn, you know, interrupt the system, we can make the connection close the valve, go back and keep working on the things we have to work on. So um, it's been carefully coordinated and we will continue to work closely with Brian. And will this add a level of reliability and controllability to the temperature? Yes. Actually, it could be some redundancy too, because we, we have the ability, if this new boiler that's an independent boiler were to shut down, you would yeah. be able to then use the primary boilers to as a backup. So. Right. But right now, our, our current boilers don't have, between the boilers and the heat exchanger, we can't keep the pool temperature to what they would like. Yeah, I um, Basically, I'd like to have it like 95 degrees. I'm exaggerating, but it feels like <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but we just yeah. can't make it there. Um, and a lot of the kids are complaining because it's cold. Yeah. Um, when, you, you, when you're in a pool for a while, it gets cold. But um, this will give us the ability to, to continue to heat the water up to the temperature that they want it. I think it's like 80. 384, something like that. Good. Nikki. I think also we talked about in the pay meeting that this would offer also some savings. Yes. You can shut down the rest of the boiler and not have to deal with it during the summer or vacation or whatever breaks versus just the pool. Yep. Yeah. It should be some significant savings over time because they're giant boilers that we're running. And we're also not putting hours on those boilers right. as well. Okay. Thank well, you. Congratulations on the effective bidding. Those numbers look good. It's always great to see. A lot of competition. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Anyone? No? Are we done with Doug? Thanks, Doug. Thank, Thank you, you, Doug. For the Bridgeboro first. Oh, yeah. Well, um, yeah. we won't kick him out quite yet. Because we're going to keep him for Ridgeboro? Yes. Just, uh, just the associate here. Yeah. Yep. All right, so at Richboro Elementary School, um, switchgear delivery. So just a brief overview of switchgear is a primary device that allows for control protection and isolation of building power systems. It regulates and meters power throughout the building. So basically it comes from Pico, goes through a transformer into the switchgear. The switchgear distributes the power throughout the building. So as you can imagine, it is one of the most crucial pieces of equipment to get power into the building. The original delivery date from Square D was June of 2024. We were all extremely happy, meets our schedule. About two weeks ago, we get alerted on, um, actually more than two weeks ago, when it, however long ago March 21st was, um, we get updated an updated ship date of August 20th. Hmm. So um, it obviously causes an issue because at that point in time, we need to start um, putting in finishes in the building. Um, things like uh, doors, flooring, any kind of wood materials, you really need a temperature controlled building and not just with temporary heat, temporary cooling, you really need a controlled building. Um, so Colin and our general contractor and electrical contractor all sat together because as soon as he said, hey, we've got a problem, I said, okay, well, don't just give me a problem, let's talk about a solution. Um, so they sat together um, and they are working with Pico to see if they will allow us to energize the transformer and the secondary panel. Um, this is not something that typically Pico would allow for a normal customer. Um, because we are a school, we are asking for special permission. Um, this area will not be accessed to anybody but contractors and electricians. So hopefully Pico is going to allow us to do that. I know there's been a bunch of conversations with them. Um, I'm actually meeting with the Pico rep tomorrow. So I'm going to push, push him to hopefully help us with this. Um, or we would bring in temporary HVAC equipment that could potentially incur additional costs. 
um, because it's no, it's no fault to the contractor. They put in their, um, in fact, I think they actually submitted their, um, their submittals, their submittals and shop drawings before they even had a contract because we knew that this was a most crucial item for them. Um, Doug, do you want to add anything? Uh, I, the only thing I would add is, you know, we're, we're looking at a couple of things, the energizing, the transformer, and secondary panel, we have to see <coughs> to what extent the secondary panel can actually serve the existing building or the new the building. Um, because the secondary panel is primarily for the HVAC equipment and not everything, so um, we have to see if that will, will do what we want it to do. Um, the other thing we're going to do is a, is a time analysis. We're going to take a look at the schedule and the impact of the schedule and how much time is lost by the other primes as a result of this. Again, it's, it's no one's uh, doing that this equipment is delayed. And we want to be careful because, as you know, it's um, four prime contractors that all work directly for the district and not for, you know, uh, with each other. So we have to make sure we work closely with the other primes in terms of any solution that we come up with that. Here. So we want to look at a, a time analysis to see um, if, if we have to wait till August, what would that mean? How many days would we lose waiting till August and how much time would we have to make up and can we possibly make up that time through second shift or, you know, second shift you still get, you get, you know, if there's a chance you could pay the money for second shift versus paying for temporary equipment. We want to analyze all those costs to see what the most cost effective solution is for this. So we're, we're still working through this. It's all new. You're hearing about it as you see, like maybe 10, 15 days after we learned about it. So we'll continue to update you on this, but Jess is all over it and, uh, and so is our team. So Yeah, you gave us an early warning last month. So we had heard this was a possibility. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, good to see you. Okay, why am I not moving here? See you, Doug. Take care. Bear with me, we're having some technical difficulties. So we took the first row of the presentation spread. So it wasn't oh, no. Got it. Okay, thanks. Uh, next is a sprinkler maintenance uh, service bid. We received five bids on Tuesday, March 12th. Uh, scope of work includes certification, preventative maintenance, and repair services for the sprinkler systems throughout the district. This is a three year agreement. Uh, we are recommending to award to Firefighter in the amount of $32,795. The previous three-year agreement was with Firefighter for $19,360. Um, keep in mind that we have had some uh, renovations lately, so we have increased the um, square footage that the um, sprinkler systems are covering, um, so Finestone being the main one to put sprinklers in. Um, so there is a, a slight increase, and then also, of course, the, the regular increase because it's three years later. Hmm? You're pleased with firefighters? Yes, they do a great job. Yep, no issues at all. Other questions? No? All right. Okay. Now I'm going to hand it over to Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Um, so, I'm going to talk about uh, building opportunities within the district, but before I get into that, I'm going to give you a little prologue, which is to talk about where we are with our debt and our ability to borrow more money at this point. Um, so if you look at this uh, graph I have up here, you can see uh, this is our debt spread <coughs> from, 20, from next year through uh, 2053, 2054. Um, uh, the red is uh, the amount of money that we will need to, to pay in debt service on interest and principal on our bonds. And the blue is the amount of money that we transfer from the general fund every year to the debt service fund. That's a fixed amount that we've been doing for several years of $18,766,200. Um, we, 
you know, as part of our debt service planning, we, we, we should continue to do that even when the debt service goes down. We have additional money in our debt service fund um, to, to cover, you know, years where maybe the debt service goes higher, depending on what we do. But uh, beyond that, um, this is, it, that's 18766 from the general fund, you know, uh, tax money that we're using to, um, f to pay for our, our debt. Uh, if you look at the first three years, the first four years, from 24 to 25, you can see this will be the first year in several years where we will have less money, to, we will be paying out less money from the general, from the debt service fund than we'll be transferring in. Um, and that's that blue area uh, up top on the left. And then you can see in, in 28, 29, it, we pay off some more debt, our principles go down, so we have some more blue, uh, in uh, 2040, 2041, or 2041, 42, there's a significant drop in that, and then it drops again, <clears throat> and then um, it does go back up towards the end. Due to how our debt is structured, some of our we've, we've had several debt issuances in the last couple of years that are structured to pay more principal at the end than at the beginning. So that's why it goes back up, but that's still a significant amount. Um, and that would be the end of our debt service, our current debt service. And this does include the 24 uh, bond issue. So this is up to date with all of our debt service. So I want you to see that to give you an idea of where we have money available to spend on additional debt should we want to occur concurrently. Um, so to give you a, a, an example of our borrowing power, um, our 2024 bond issue was for $11,280,000. Um, in 2024, we paid five, or during this 24 school year, we will pay $5,000 worth of principal, um, which will leave $11,275,000 outstanding. Um, <clears throat> in that same period, we will pay $459,235 in interest. Um, so if I take that, um, $459,000, that's on $11,275,000 worth of debt. Um, I divide that 459 by the 11.275. That means per $1 million borrowed, we're paying on this debt, debt issue, the most recent debt issuance, we're paying about $40,730 and 38 cents worth of interest. Um, now, this is the most recent example that I have of a debt, so this is not necessarily what an, uh, another bond issue we would issue would be, be the interest rate, but this is the most current information that we have. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, uh, when, so right now, for, for, for the sake of this demonstration, $40,730 is, is what we would pay in interest to borrow a million dollars worth of debt. Um, and you can see uh, we have this this um this area right in here. That's about seven hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, available money. So, if we look at um, our district borrowing power over the over the over the next twenty um, almost twenty five years, um, this is each year when our borrowing when our, when we pay off another debt and our amount of, of, of uh, available fund, debt service funds that are available increases to pay for new debt um, because of the payoff in old debt. Uh, so in, in, in 24-25, if we were to, to um, uh, our, our budgeted debt service uh, transfer is at 18766401 our budgeted debt service payments is 17998788 That gives us an excess of $767,613. Um, if that would mean that for that period, we could borrow $18.85 million. Um, the next time that we pay off debt enough to make a difference would be in 2029. That would um, leave us with, during that period, 2196000 That's That's the excess less, and, and then the, the excess of that, less what, we were, what we're paying on any debt we would say issue in 24-25, would allow us to borrow $53.93 million. Same thing in 2040-2041, uh, we would be able to borrow 
Because remember, this is this is basically just making interest payments, structuring our debt, so that the principal is later on, um, like we've been doing. So just making interest, we would need this much that that, that much debt service availability uh, would allow us to borrow this amount of money uh, to pay the interest. And then in 2046, 2047, it would allow for borrowing an additional $6.89 million. So that's um, where we're at right now as far as with the amount of money that we set aside in the general fund budget from taxes to pay for our debt service every year. That's what we, so that, that's what we have available right now. Uh, or I should say starting in 24, 25. Oh, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, since our budget is based over time, does it make sense to keep the debt service at the same level? I know we have been trying to keep it at 18 but would it make sense to allow for like a higher percent of the budget in debt service? Um, I, I would, <coughs> that, that, that depends on how, how you plan to, you know, if, if you're planning to borrow, you know, and that's why I want to get into the, 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 the different opportunities that I'm talking about for buildings. Is we have um, we have if if we we if if you want to do more projects, uh, we would have to increase the uh, the amount of the amount of taxes uh, that go to debt service in order to uh, borrow more more than that eighteen million dollars. Is that, is that, so that's really what I'm, I'm driving at with this. Um, can I, can I does that answer that? your question? Joe? Uh, kind of, but we'll talk about it. I'm going to piggyback off of what Yoda said, Ms. Polly said, because, yeah, I, I'm just, just, just look at 2025, 20, right? 18.7 million. In 15 years, in 2021, 20, 18 million doesn't go as far, you know, so, and, but understand it's like, basically it was a thing that the board made, uh, uh, put a cap on it at some point. And we talked about it before. And I guess at some point, maybe we'll look at the cap as a percentage of the budget or whatever. But I mean, this is a good tool because it keeps us controlled uh, by having that number. But we all know that, that we're going to lose purchasing power so that's something to be had, but I'm not trying to change your math because we don't. You don't want to be pretending what a, a board's going to think we can raise our caps to our our debt limit. So right. So you're doing it within the confines of this is within the confines. That's fine. Of the that's fine. Debt but we, you know, what Yoda and I are saying is um, down yeah. the road we'll have to raise you know the cap well, to go up with inflation. You had a question. I did. Um, I'm not necessarily sure I agree with that because right now we we live within our means. We have that budget, and it's it's nice and flat. We'll see where that goes. You know, yeah. because if we raise that number, we're going to raise the taxes, which you know we have we're going to have to raise taxes. Right now, that 18.7 million does not affect the taxes this year, next year. It's always going to be the same <laughs> as far as a dollar amount. My question though is, when you look at that borrowing power of 18 million. If we do not use that money, is the fifty-three million in twenty-eight twenty-nine in addition to the eighteen million, or is that just a total? It's an addition. So if we don't use it in twenty-eight twenty-nine, then our borrowing power would be more <coughs> towards seventy million dollars. Yes. Okay. It's just wanted to declare, you know, as I as I look at future needs and you know if we spend it now we're not going to have it later if we don't spend it now we may mm -hmm. taking into joe's point our borrowing power will probably be less mm -hmm. all right can tony continue good all right so <clears throat> and then this is why i brought it up because <laughs> we have what we can spend but this is what we're looking at in you know where we have to spend where where we <laughs> possibly, you know, these are our opportunities to improve our facilities and our buildings. Uh, and when I say building opportunities, I mean that as a uh, as a verb and a noun. So uh, we have full day kindergarten. We're going to go through. I, I got a slide for each of these, but Wright Elementary, Chancellor Center, Twining Ford Road, Richboro Middle School. 
uh, Newtown Elementary School, Maureen M. Welch Elementary School, Council Rock North, Council Rock South, and the House Track property. Um, and just uh, so to give you an idea of where what we're looking at is, so we're thinking of this in, in terms of a, of a radar, and you have where the star is, that's in close to the radar. Um, that's uh, uh, you know, our, our, probably our, our closest things on that radar right now. Full day kindergarten, uh, Rice Town Elementary space issues, and the Chancellor Center. Um, obviously, full day kindergarten and Rice Town Elementary are kid centric. Uh, Things so those are you know they're 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 paramount, um, but we have other things that are you know five year, five year capital plan, the house track, the twenty Ford Road property, and the Richboro Middle School building. Uh, they're the green dots that are further out on the radar. So <coughs> they're things we need to be thinking about, but they're not right on that. They're not you know right, right up against our ship. This is a really cool slide. <laughs> yes, this is, and I wanted to say <laughs> thank you to Andrea for this for doing such a great job with this slide. What a job. AI. Can you, no. 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 Kind of gives you a visual of what's going on. <coughs> uh, so, first item full day kindergarten. We're currently considering implementation without major construction, um, you know, seeing where we can fit, fit, fit it in. Uh, we are still considering the effects of bathrooms and specials. Um, and, you know, a successful program might, may require additional expansion in the future. Um, you know, I, I don't see why we wouldn't have a successful program, so it may require some additional expansion. Um, in the future, whether that's buildings or however we handle it. Um, the Town Elementary, we know that we have um, some space issues um, and classes are capped based upon space needs. Uh, students who we, you know, there are some students who are sent to partner schools within the district. Yes. Chancellor Center. Um, so, we talked about this last year. Uh, right now, we're in a situation with this building where we have things that need to be done yesterday. <laughs> um, the, last year. Yeah, the the uh, HVAC system is being held together with um, band-aids and duct tape. Uh, there, you know, uh, there's an internal air quality issue prior to that. We also have um, water infiltration within the building. Uh, both of the, all those things need to be addressed uh, short, very shortly, um, as we need to start planning for that. And that's about over six million dollars of um, work that needs, at least, it's over six million dollars that, that will need to be done to address these issues in the building. Um, the uh, uh, just that's up there for you know carryover from the last time. There's other that there you know if we were to consider a total renovation, it would cost 16 plus million dollars, um, and that that would require some other other uh, items. But um, you know we don't need to do that. You know this is not a we don't need to do that to keep the building running. That that's just you know <laughs> pie in the sky. I think. Uh, but that's that's the situation with this building where we're at a we're at a point where we need to decide what we want to do with this building, and that includes spending over six million dollars on the building, which is money that we would not be able to spend on facilities for the students. I don't know if you are planning to talk about that. Can we talk about our options, uh, like the appraisal value? Yeah, I'll I talk about that later. Sorry. I'm just moving ahead. <laughs> I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so some other options, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, if we we could, you know, you know, other than fixing the building, we can consider moving some select chancellor employees to the twenty fourth property and into the schools. Um, and I will we'll say that that I, I did forget to mention that that six million dollars worth of work 
would require us to vacate the building while it was done because it would require a dig out of the foundations. And uh, I mean, you know, I think if we were to plan that, we would plan to utilize Richboro Middle School during that, that period as the administration building. Um, in, 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 uh, or, you know, if, if we didn't want to do that, utilize Richboro Middle as a temporary location for this building. Um, for, for, for the people in this building who we don't have room for in the schools, like obviously my office and human resources would not be, it wouldn't be appropriate to put them in the schools. Um, uh, uh, but not, not have staff, right? I have staff over Richboro Middle now. Um, but Richboro Middle is a very temporary solution, a very, very temporary solution. If just for saying it, she'd have another very. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or another option to consider in lieu of staying in this building instead of any six million dollars would be to find property for the administration that could we could rent for for the for use of the of uh, of the um uh, for the for administration. I I'm looking at uh, option one, move select Chancellor Center employees to twenty for property and schools. Yes. If you do that option, you do you still need all the the HVAC? Though you know, is the water still a problem? You know, well, it's all still a problem. It, it, I guess my question is, the people like I think the transportation's in the basement, right? Yes. And so water's a problem in the basement. Can we move them to somewhere else and save some money on the basement? No, it's the the the, the work that needs to be done needs to be done to to make sure that the building stays safe. Is not just is not just because we're um, water running through the bottom of the building like a river does not make it safe to be on the first or second floor as well. Well, we're we're worried about foundation damage, and that. so you know, I, I think we're at the point where we we don't want to risk where we're we we're, we're, we don't want to risk any foundation damage and. The building's value is negligible if it's got foundation issues that need to be rectified, right? Yes. So that, that would that essentially negate the opportunity to sell it? Well, if, <coughs> we could sell it. Um, it's not our as is. Yeah. As is, yeah. um, which the the value of, of the property is the is the land. Yeah. Um, right now, and, and another thing that I, I just, not that school buildings have value to the general public, but if we put $6 million into this building, it would add, right now, it, it, right now, the land's worth about $2 million. The cost of rent of, of, of and I, I, I want to be very careful that I'm not advocating for anything. <laughs> the cost of, Taking care of the building, it should somebody else want to buy it and do that, is a million dollars. So, so really, the building is at zero, and then there's a million dollars worth of cost. So, um, we're actually, you know, the building actually drives the cost down, the, the value down by a million dollars. If we were to fix those issues, we'd spend six million dollars. It would increase the value of the property and land by two million dollars. So, we'd be spending six million dollars for two million dollars worth of value. Uh, can you go back to that slide though where it talks about the six what's the uh, right column that we haven't even talked about there yet well I said that's that's that that would be a full renovation of the building that's not necessary uh, to to stay in this building the, to stay in this building temporarily I mean, I mean because this the six million is an immediate cost but at some point in time, there's going to be other costs that are going to be needed in this building, true, or more. So it's really not going to be, it's $6 million now and X a few years from now, most likely. Like we just, we just sunk $100,000 into an elevator. And now we're talking $6 million, And then that takes care of maybe some of the other problems. But it's not going to take care of everything. There's other things that are going to be needed to be done to this building. It's probably going to push that number more towards the 16 million, or no? Well, that's that would be 
part of that cost, I believe, is a um, full renovation of the building where we would plan out that what would be the ideal setup for the administration. And this is a building I that. I wouldn't advocate for that. This is a building that really does not even. It's not even functional for the services that it is intended, correct or no? I think it serves it serves most of its function, its intended function. So this is a fine facility for our workers to be in, and it meets the needs of the administration and staff that are here. It is a healthy building to be in. Pardon me. It is a healthy building to be in. There is. Currently, no environmental or like I I, I I don't want th that to get construed. Okay, I don't mean I don't mean as far as the health and safety issues like the ventilation and stuff. Okay. Um, I'm st I'm talking about this is an administrative building. Does this facility really serve the purpose of an administrative building, or would it be better served as something else or nothing else as we consider i mean there's you you build a i'm just uh, i'm not really asking this is more of a rhetorical question rhetorical. Uh, okay okay yes. <laughs> so the six in window includes the six right yeah yes and yeah. if we somehow find the six million now and do this project how long do we have to wait until we need to spend like the other ten? Um, Is it like five years, ten years? What's the projection? I mean, I I I would say you know, there's some work that would need to be done with like like there's different things and stuff there. We have floors, they're they're usable. There's not no no structural problems with the floors. It's just. Some of them to preserve them need some work. Um, but replacement. Replacement. Um, there's the lighting in this building is not the best. Um, we, but you know, if you've ever come in this room and turn the lights on, you've got a couple minutes before it actually gets light. Um, but it, it's nothing that we can't that administration can't live with. So. Right. So I mean, it is a building of. Sentimental value, right? It's the first school, um, and it just, it's just beautiful. Um, and I, I, at the same time, financially, it doesn't make sense to spend all this like six million to get two back. And also, if we, for plus, whatever plus reason, the, plus the cost of us not being in here while that six million is being renovated. Everyone's got to leave anyway. Yeah, that I don't think that's going to be a huge number, though. I mean, say if someone gave us a grant of six million, I mean, to do all this work, you know, I, I'm sure it would be okay to go somewhere else for a few months and then come back. Um, I would think it's about sixty thousand dollars just for the. You have to hire a mover, and I think that's about it's about thirty thousand each way. Based Plus on the rental of the chiller and a place yeah. to go. Yes, and, and we would have to rent a chiller for Richburg Metal like we've been doing. So if we say we decide to move up out of this building, what are the options for this building? Say we think that it's better to be space or go somewhere else. What happens to this building? What are the options? Um, I mean, one of the obviously one of the options is it would be to put it up for sale. Um, or for a negative value, repurpose. No, it's not negative value, no, but you know they that use of the building is not what someone would buy it for. Um, uh, but um, or you know if there were was a worthwhile group that we would want to donate it to would probably be. A better, not better, but a possible solution. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We would want to not hold on to the building because somebody would have to address those issues soon. And if we cannot 
donate it or if we cannot sell it, then what do we have? At some point we would probably have to. Um, I mean... We have to pay insurance, right? We have to pay insurance. Um, May I? Yes. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've had a lot of discussion about, you know, options and some considerations and you know I think it would be interesting to think about um, the cost not to think about but to consider the potential cost of building say a new administration building on the site of Richboro Middle School. I think we ought to know ballpark what that looks like um, and um, you know I think the figure of 16 million is a good one for us to be thinking about in terms of, of staying here. Um, I've always wondered, and it was in my first year on the board that, that I suggested, and then we went out and got an appraisal for this building and decided it didn't at that point make financial sense. Plus, we were uncertain about, and I'm still, this is the question I'm driving at, I'm still uncertain about how attractive this would be on the market and what the borough would permit and not permit with this property. Um, I, because I, yeah. Sorry, I did speak to borough council president today and she did clarify this is not, this is zoned not residential. So like condos or something like that would, not that it couldn't happen, but it would be variance. Office space. I, I, it's, off, it's for office space. <laughs> yeah. Joe. Yeah. Um, I'm sentimental, so I try to stay out of this one because, you know, this is a, the first school. Uh, it's a beautiful building. It does. It's tired. I've watched, you know, we need a trench around, you know, drainage issues and stuff. Um, we did talk about the administrative building going on a rich borough site and Doug presented publicly that you would basically raise the back end of the school and two after or or raise the whole thing and do a new building which is or just kind of modify the front I'm, oh, I'm gonna go back and just say from my gut just raise the whole thing and do a brand new building um, no more of this modified stuff for something that old and uh, so we'll compare the costs and look at it and see what we can do There's, this is a big question mark here but if uh, but so is Rich Bear. So I think that's a really, really good idea to consider. I mean, I'm not even going to go because there's other things I feel like we might need another middle school in that space might also, it might be both. So you have to put in all this different, it's, it's some tough decisions we have to make. It's probably one of the hardest decisions I have to make on this board is the capital planning over the next five years, all of us, or four years. Linda. So. One of the other things about this building is, do you, do you believe that this building, even under a renovation, would be able to uh, meet the needs of the district in the next five or ten years? Is there enough room? I think, it would, anyway? I think, I think it would require, um, between, you know, who's in, you know, it would require planning if to do that. I mean, it would, it would have to have some realistic planning about because it looks tight with the where, present um, number of people, <clears throat> and you have people on the outside too that have to come in. And if we uh, hire any additional people, I don't know that this building, even if we modified it, could even meet the needs. Professional development. Could happen anywhere though right like it like today they were doing training for wonders they could do that in their middle school or like that. and yeah. the other thing is then if you look at um building on the rich barrow site if one of the options is taking that building down then we do have to find another place to temporarily move everyone or spend the six million for the short term while the other building is being built, right? So somehow we <laughs> yeah. we'll have to figure out all those. You can't raise the building and then use it as a temporary site for staff here, so. 
But if you, I don't know what the cost of putting a new building up, how many million that's going to be. Maybe the six million to short term is not a big deal against the cost of a, a, a new building. building again. You know? I think also in the, in the discussion, we talked about the six million, but it says six plus million. Um, so as they're digging for the water infiltration, talking about a, about a building that has parts of it that are what, over 100 years old. Um, I know I had asked the question, if we did the six million <coughs> the base maintenance, like how much life would we get out of that? And I think it would take, I think just, correct me if I'm wrong, so maybe 20 years is your best guesstimate, if nothing else, if in a perfect world. Yeah, I think and, I said that I don't have a crystal ball. Right, exactly. So. Absolutely. I just wanted a figure. And then we talked about, you know, another option on here we talked about, we haven't really discussed here at the table, is renting an administrative office. Um, whether that's long term, whether that's a rent to potentially rent or lease to potentially purchase. We're talking about $6 million, you know, divided by 20 years. That's three hundred thousand dollars a year for rent for leasing a rental space, which you know I think we had discussed about looking into, seriously looking into you know, um, working with a realtor or looking what our options are, right? Because six plus million dollars now, but then that you know we still haven't really addressed the Chancellor Center. Um, that was what I wanted. To do. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, Tracy. I think we need. Yeah, a lot more information before we can make an educated decision. I, I am like Mr. Hidalgo, like this building is so special to me. I would hate to part with it, but you know, we can't make an educated decision until we have how much would it cost to build a new uh, administrative site? How much, like you said, would it cost to rent? Like actual numbers. Are these estimates true actual numbers? Um, and and like Wrightstown and um, what was the other immediate uh, uh, the immediate thing that you mentioned needed to be done? Well, they can well, they yeah. Well, well, the kindergarten might not cost that much, you know, in in upfront costs, and we I think we've addressed that. But like Wrightstown, uh, it's my understanding that there's no possibility really for expanding that. So. I don't know really what the cost is there. So if we're looking at like our immediate, if our three immediate things are, you know, kindergarten, which, you know, we have a, a plan for, um, Wrightstown, which yes, it's a problem, but also there's no amount of money that can add more building space, if, it, if I understand that correctly, and then um, the Chancellor Center. So, so I think we need a lot more information. Okay. Like, briefly, I'm thinking the six plus to Nikki's point is probably more like eight. I'm not going to say that this building needs it, but I would not be surprised if it did require underpinning. So I think that's definitely a deserved plus. But that's not really my question. Um, the thought is if we had $16 million to put into Richboro Middle, or Twining Ford or some other site for modifications for an administrative building, would that be enough? And I think that's kind of where Mr. Tate was going. Richboro Meadow will be about $42 million to make it usable. How much? 42. But that's the whole school. And so the 16, if we put six plus into it, the building potentially could be worth two. If we put 16 into it, the building could potentially be four, <laughs> right? Just, I just wanted to yeah. add those numbers into our collective heads as we're thinking about this. I think that's a good point. I, I, I'll just say, personally, I tend to think the operative number is the 16 million um, in order to make this <laughs> building uh, the proper facility that our, that our administration center needs. <coughs> yeah. 
I, I, I just want, I want to go back to, to the point of the, <coughs> these slides. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was to address the fact that um, our, our, our number one priority has got to be the kids. And um, I, want, I want to make sure that we're, that, 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 you know, where we're spending our money is wisest so that we have the, that money available for, for spending on kids. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about, about what um, anybody here is saying. I'm just saying, yeah. all, all I'm just saying is that that, 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 that is the point of, of these slides, is that, you know, this is $6 million, not a dime of it goes to a kid. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, I just want to clarify because, uh, again, we have to pay the money for the administrators to be able to support the children. So that's money that we're going to spend on the kids somewhere. The kids, we have to house the administration, which is key to children's success. <coughs> but as far as the 40-some uh, million dollars to renovate completely, that would be keeping it as a middle school, not changing it into an administrative building. So I, I think I think we have slides with Rich Borough um, Middle, so I don't want to jump okay. too far ahead. Okay, we're going to be into this for a while. Okay. There's so if you look at replacement value versus renovation, it's more expensive to renovate Rich Borough Middle than to build new. Absolutely, and that's what I'm saying because you just ask, you can tell me how much Scar Center cost us. You know, add the inflation, you can build a brand new building typically. That square footage, maybe a little bit bigger, we'll, we'll do the same thing. So um, if you got that, I'm going to, let's go on with the slides. But I think it was a good start discussion. Yeah, I agree. Why don't we yeah. move on? We covered this. I, I just walked water and filtration, HVAC replacement are, are in, in imminent need. Keep it in mind that um, we wouldn't even be able, if we started planning now, it would probably be six to eight months till we could even consider doing anything in uh, 24 Road property currently houses district maintenance and eight staff and ABM. It's a 10 acre former night nuclear base decommissioned in 1961. I do want to point out that there are concrete tunnels that remain on the property. We do not, there, there is no access to those tunnels, but they are still there. Um, uh, we did have talk about some planned renovations. We, we would like to postpone those a roof replacement, a window replacement, an emergency generator. I th we, we think this building is part of a, that, that whatever we do with this building is part of the larger plan <laughs> for the district and to put a million dollars into this building right now for um, when we don't know, you know, where where things are gonna end up that, that, that and, and the, the, we have a few years before we need to do any of these things. We did have an issue with the generator. We have another way that we are, we're going to address that by putting the food in, in food in the high schools. Um, so there are a few things that we can do, but I believe we would be able to do most of those in-house that, that we would like to do. Uh, I'll come back. I'll, I'll wait for your presentations over before my question, but I do want to come back to this slide. So we would like to not do this project during, during this yeah. Okay. So you don't want to do any renovations. You just want to hold off where we're going to go with yes. whatever the decision is from. Yes. I think there is one which I think Doug had um, alluded to, which was the 12000 just to make like the surface, I think, or the, one of the buildings in the 24, right? The roof. The, the roof. So right now we don't have any active leaks. Okay. So we don't have to do anything Nothing. right now. Okay. Now, if maybe potentially in the in long term, yes. Okay. But for this, we're not recommending moving forward with any of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Richboro Middle School originally built in 1963. All the systems are outside of their useful life. Uh, estimates to renovate currently exceed the replacement value of the building. So we have this building. Um, if we were to renovate it for uh, school use, it would be less expensive to tear it down and build a new one. Um, and then again, I'm just laying out where we are with these buildings that are our opportunity. Schools next in line for renovation for the capital plan. This on the radar slide, this was the uh, five-year capital plan. Um, new 10 elementary school. So before I say that, we have 10 elementary schools. We've recently renovated eight of them. There are two that are next in line to be renovated. Um, and we, we need to talk about plan these. The first would be Newtown Elementary, and then the second would be Maureen M. Welch Elementary, a 30-year-old building, a 24-year-old building. Um, and going back to that, this is something that we, that, you know, 
following the capital plan, we should be planning to renovate these buildings. Uh, just as on, on, on the low side, uh, each of these buildings would be about a $25 million renovation on the low side, considering our, our local. So right there, you know, we've, we've exceeded that um, $18 million that we've had available just on these two schools for the next four years. Um, and then we have North, which is a 54-year-old building last renovated in 2002. Um, we, uh, um, that is going to be a, a big project, um, whether it's a renovation or whatever we, we plan to do with that building. Um, you know, it is a rather old building with, it's, it's a safe building, but it's, you know, it's, it has its maintenance problems, challenges. challenges that we, we, we solved, but, um, you know, we, we you know, we, that would be next in line um, after Newtown and, and Welch as far as the renovation schedule on our five-year capital plan. Um, and then south, uh, we are, is a 22-year-old building. That would be the next one out in the north. Uh, we are, as part of our summer projects, we have uh, facade restoration and uh, roof replacement, a facade restoration for next year and a roof replacement in 2027. Um, but we will be anticipating the need for other renovations in the future. Um, but, you know, that's, that's another build. That's, you know, that, the, those are the next four buildings on our capital plan. Tony, yes. was the, you said for the elementary is about 25 million each? At, at a minimum. And what about the high schools? Um, I, I, I don't, we, we don't have a plan specifically, not even, we don't have a plan for either one, but to talk about what is needed at South, I don't know that we're quite there yet. Um, to talk about North, um, I, I don't, it's, it's hard to estimate by the time we get there what it might be, so I don't know that, you know, will we give a number up, but it, it's, it, I would imagine it's pretty, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot, it's, you know. Like 150? Yeah. I mean, we can do an estimate to build something like that based on square feet. I, I, I think we've, we've ballparked. 130. Um, but I, you can't hold me to that. <laughs> no, because that's just, no. well, that's just, that's just us, us looking at square footage and looking at what construction costs right now. At today's cost, at today's and cost by the time we get to it, it could be yeah. five years out. So. Yes. 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 So, and I, so I really don't like giving you that number, but um, that's. Yeah. There's, there's two, not to change the subject, there's two schools additional that pop up in my head because I know that, um, you know, Newtown and, and, and Welsh were, born, were, were built new. So they're, they, they're 30 and 24 years old. Um, and so I think of Holland and I think of Churchville. Those schools were the first to get renovated, but they really got, you know, a light do over. So. When I'm saying when you when you're going to compare them in ten years, like Churchill or Holland, they I'm not sure. You know, just keep and take a look at it because I know like some of the HVAC was just kind of worked in. Uh, they didn't get the full rehabs that we developed over the time. So that I would also say, when you redo, well, if you look at Welsh versus those other two schools I mentioned, it's a Welsh is a beautiful, beautiful school, wide open and. Um, the other schools look like they were pretty old and just basically the, some of the stuff was done to it, but it wasn't like the rehabs we were doing to, let's say, Hillcrest or, or the other schools. Wrightstown was actually redone or no, that was actually just modified. Well, a question. Um, as you look at the next things in line here with this particular slide and you say Newtown and Welsh, is there any economies of scale, for example, when we were going to do Richboro and Hillcrest, when we combined them, there was a lot of savings to be had, and then we ended up separating them and paying a lot more money. Is there any way to look at into combining both schools and what would be needed just to see if maybe you could drive down that cost somewhat? Would be worth it. You know, and maybe, I don't want to say do them together, but do them in sync where it's one kind, you know. Good point. So, 
I don't know that you'd be able to bid them together and give them to one contractor. Um, we would have to look into the bidding requirements for a project like that. And then I would be nervous about the size of the project and the availability of contractors. Yeah, I don't know. I think bid them at the same time. You, well, we, Hillcrest we originally, originally the Hillcrest Richboro project not, was supposed yeah. to cost I believe thirty six million total. Yes. And now because we did them separately, it probably ended up costing fifty million dollars. Yes. You know, it's it's a big nut. You yes. know, and, and as we look as we're trying to do this and keep to the plan, you know, maybe it's a, an opportunity to save some money if we can combine the projects. Yep. Tony. Um, next slide, house track. Uh, 72.9 acres available for the districts used in Town Township. It's currently leased to a spot form for a nominal yearly fee. Um, and we do have the ability to get out of that in 30 days. And Does everybody know where that is? What's the value it's of that? Rated, it's it? rated, I'm sorry, it's rated Durham and Stoopville. So if you're right there, and it's a big, it's a beautiful spot. green yeah. spot with beautiful sunsets. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tracy. Yes. I was just asking what the no. what the value of it is if we were to sell it. So, so. Um, I don't I don't know what the value of it is. Um, I mean, we can. I wouldn't want to pay for a, 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 an assessment. Uh, we can do some research and see what land is selling for in that area. Um, however, I would I would caution against selling it because you know. That's that's our ace of the hole, <laughs> you know. That's that thing, that place that we have. That should we ever, you know, you know, that we need something to do something. We, you, you have that available to make a decision to, to do do something with that. So so, but I can. This um, is the piece of the puzzle. Okay, and uh, options to consider. So, this is you know this is I, I think our first decision is the Chancellor Center. Stay in Chancellor Center and plan for six million dollars, six plus million dollars in immediate renovations. Uh, relocate staff and make a long-term decision on the property. Look into renting office space or moving to Richboro Middle in January 25. Uh, rent cost versus cost of maintaining RMS. Cost of maintaining RMS is going to keep going up. That's why I say that's a very putting us in there at all would be a very short-term solution. Putting us in there in the current state, you know, we, you know, the other things are going to go. We, you know. The, the boilers are old. Um, the uh, we'd already have to rent a chiller for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, so, um, but you know that also renting would depend on finding a rental space that meets our needs and is a re and, and is a reasonable price. Um, so, uh, just um, you know, I I. I guess we we talk about this like some some direction, um, you know. If we want to talk about renting, engaging a real estate agent would be a time-consuming prospect for us. I'm not saying that, but you know, if, if that's something that the board wants us to do, then we can look into that. Uh, you know, what, you know, if if you you know whatever you're considering, you know, is the best way to move forward with this, but. But we are at a point where we need, we need to get a decision soon um, as far as what we want to do here long term. Yes. What's the square footage of this? Roughly 35,000 square feet. 35,000? That's not a huge group. It is not. So if we were to build something new, which is 35,000 square feet, what would be the estimated cost? I would not use 35,000 square feet. Um, I would increase it because your boardroom has challenges. There's um, so we would be looking probably to increase the size of the building, but roughly right now, uh, safe number is about four hundred and fifty dollars a square foot. Okay, and um, you said that if we want to see if there is an existing building that we could uh, lease and possibly buy of the same size. I mean, there's just 
so much commercial real estate available everywhere. So, um, I mean, we could look into that, right, and see the cost of leasing with an option to buy. It would yeah. probably be, be less than building something new. And, but, and you gotta keep in mind with that as well, depending on how that building's fit out, it would have to, you know, if we'd have to spend money. So, retrofit, renovating, retrofit. Fit it to, to the new Yeah, but that always happens when you, when you lease or a building, you always have to put mm -hmm. that. It's standard. You also need to consider that you, if you are going to rent, you probably don't need to rent that full 35,000 square feet because you you could have options of having your board meetings at one of the, at the high schools. Oh, uh, middle schools. Middle schools, sorry. <laughs> middle schools um, to help mat out. Um, you, you also have the opportunity for for um, Twining Ford, some of us to move to Twining Ford. Um, so it, you wouldn't need your full 35,000 square feet to rent. And then renovation at Twining Ford, but that's a whole nother. And I'm sorry. That's exactly what I was just going to try to understand here, because you mentioned yeah. Twining Ford before. You're talking about moving staff to Richboro, but then some to Twining Ford. How, you're okay to separate them, or would you want to move them together and keep them in all of you guys together? Um, I, I think we're talking about um, like 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 it's specific to roles within the district, like buildings and transportation would be better suited just to go to Twining Ford. People who are in this building who are involved in special services would be better to go to the building, the school building. I mean. Go to the Richborough Middle. No, no, uh, into into school buildings. In the various schools across the district. District. Yeah. Oh, so you'd separate everybody pretty much now, then, wouldn't? Well, not. Okay. So maybe a good example would be we have six technology immigration specialists in the district. Yeah. <clears throat> Four of them live every day, <clears throat> excuse me, in a school building. Two reside here. Now they come here and they're out in buildings every day. Um, but with any of our schools, if we could put those, uh, and I don't want to alarm all of the technology integration, <laughs> but yeah. that, that's an example. Um, when you have a department like HR and business that has to work so closely together, we believe they would have to be in the same location. And again, just for the technology integration specialist, I'm just using them as an example because we have a disparate setup right now. Four in schools, two are in, in this building. My entire staff is, except for Christine Digidio, we're all in 24. In 24, yeah. so you would be all together. But you're not going to do any reservation renovations on 24. Well, that's, so where, that's where, where is that headed? Th that's, I guess, that's am I all, jumping the gun here? That's all part of it. No, it's all Yeah, it's, you know, depending on where you would go with different things, I wouldn't want to put money into. 24 right now right. because That's something what I don't understand. Okay. future planning might cause that building to be unnecessary. Which I'm not saying question. it will, but I know what your question is, I bet. Uh, yeah, I'm like, probably there's a couple of them. I, I tried didn't bring it up. I wasn't sure what the slides were. I wanted to wait. Do we have an appraisal on Twining Ford, the property? And like I said, and basically we all need to make a decision as opposed to just keep on talking about it of exactly what we want to do. But another possibility is, you know, what's the possibility of selling Twiney Ford and putting that facility along with the Chancellor Center into whether it be a Richboro Middle School, be the house track or somewhere and consolidating both facilities into one. I'm just drawing out a possible suggestion that we sell this place we sell that place, we consolidate everybody into one area, whether it be the middle school or the house track. But basically, the nine of us, we need to say, this is what we want. It's, it's all intertwined and we need to make a decision as a direction we're gonna take as to keep on talking about it. Cause it is important. I don't like spending money on buildings. It's not, a, it, it's not going to kids, however, we have a lot of buildings that we need to take care of or or not and to you know 
people need to be able to do their, you guys need to be able to do your job as well. Um, but I, like I said, I just wanted to throw out, like, do we have an appraisal on that building as well, which would be something that could help offset. We sell this building, we sell that building, at least maybe we have a little bit more money to do something else, whether it's Richboro, house track, or something that none of us have thought of yet outside the box. The 24 is appraised at $960,000. Um, and that's, again, reducing the value of the land because to any other entity that the buildings wouldn't be worth worth much. But how, how much of the buildings do we use between ABM and your staff? All of it. A, a number, and I mean, hundred <coughs> percent. Like, I maybe mean, I'm not asking, maybe I'm not understanding your question. Like, how big is it? Like, when you say all of it, is it? Oh, you know, I don't know the square footage of it's not big. Right, like, is it ten thousand square feet, twenty thousand, fifty thousand? Oh, you don't have to give me an answer right this second. I'm not, you know. I I could look it up on the in the, on book, the binder, but please. I don't want to no. screw up the presentation. No, no, we're good. But we, we do have that, and I have it in the binder downstairs. I don't know what it was off the top of my head. Okay. Joe. Thanks. Um, so, obviously, this is a lot of moving parts. Did we ever consider or would we utilize some type of uh, third-party service, that, whether it be an engineer or some kind of logistic or some someone that has the expertise? Is it like Because we're kind of in a in a... I mean, we could probably figure it out. I think we could probably figure it out, but I'm just wondering if, and I'm not saying use the same engineering firm as who's, <laughs> but have other schools used other services to kind of say, hey, let's just get this all together. You know, not charge, don't spend too much money, but obviously these are big decisions. And I think, um, as you said, we're gonna be talking about this because we're gonna need to get a lot more uh, information about each part. So does it make sense to have a, to go out and bring in a third party that hopefully we, you know, will do a good job of putting it together. Cause you know, it's a full-time job to do this. Other districts have used what they've called a master planner. Right. Um, so firms, and, yeah. and I know you said other, other, well, we have companies, used but it. firms like Dewey and Schrader, both Schrader. do this kind of work. Schrader's already done it for us. So maybe we would revisit Schrader. I think in 2015, they did something with the, with a lot. Well, let's take a look. The architect work on yeah, that. I'm not yeah. sure, but but yeah, I I brought up that point before as well, Joe. I I went through this process when I was at the University of Illinois, and also when I was at Rutgers, and um, it's you know it's Have a to. pretty comprehensive process, <laughs> uh, looking at a number of years, and you know our administration is a lean administration, and and you know um, I think it's an idea worth considering if the administration welcomed it. Uh, I think while it would cost money, um, it might save money in the end in terms of avoiding bad mistakes, finding the most cost-effective cost way to address these issues. I have a specific question to your point, Tony, about students. Um, <clears throat> the three top priorities right now uh, in that great radar image are full day kindergarten, we're working on costing that. Uh, Chancellor, we've been, been talking a lot about costing Chancellor, but I'm wondering, in terms of Wrightstown Elementary, how can we spend money that will address the crowding problem at Wrightstown Elementary? Because, as I think Tracy said, you know, we know there's site constraints in terms of expanding Wrightstown Elementary. so. If we're going to address that problem, what do we do? You can take it, Jess. You can only add four classrooms. But you can. Four classrooms will not stop the capping. Does that answer your question? So you need to redistrict, send them back to Richmond. Yeah, you, there, it's it's that R word that nobody wants to talk about with the Wrightstown community. Well, you know, whether you avoid it, you know, it's. It's there, but nobody wants to. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's and, and until they do, you know, you're just leaving that Wrightstown community just hanging out there. Do you think 
four additional classrooms at Wrightstown make sense because we're talking about, first of all, a two-year time window, three-year time window? I'd say with piping up there, it's closer to three years. Three years, yeah. Because of the spray fields. We think that a four classroom addition <coughs> would be uh, helpful, very helpful to the Wrightstown community in the short term based again going back to the projections and forecast we have from Cropper. We don't necessarily know if the, um, if the, if the projections are going to hold um, and how long they'll hold based on enrollment numbers. Uh, and that's one of the considerations that we have discussed is what does it look like if we build four classrooms there and that meets the need for three, four, five, six years um, what happens year seven and eight and nine if, we, if we're out of space based on the enrollment population in that building? Yeah. The house Thank track, 72.9 acres. What's the possibility of putting a Wrightstown Elementary there to, for that possibility and figure out if we had Chancellor and the Twining sold some place to put the administration with everybody in the twining forward and all, all those individuals in a facility. One option that we haven't talked about is putting Chancellor at Wrightstown. If you build a new Wrightstown, you use Wrightstown for your admin building. And we haven't really went down that road, but that, that could be a possibility. Because the, the property at Wrightstown is how many acres? Seventy-two. Read my book. It's not seventy-two. Let me tell you. I can run out, run out of the car and get it. Right in my bag. Said my bag. <laughs> um, and continue on spacing. If there's continued growth in that area, four, four classes are only going to be temporary, and we're gonna, we can't block that out. And Jess has pointed out many times that four classrooms, while will provide some relief going back and trying to add four classes when we're not getting um, good value for our money uh, on a project like that. So what's the thought of going to investigate to find out what it would be to have a, the property there and just as you said taking Wrightstown, if that takes the facility from Chancellor, does that fit also 24 because you still have that facility we would have to make some renovations modifications obviously for the needs of our maintenance <coughs> um, you know, they, they they work on equipment all year long um, they have essentially a supply house in part of one of the buildings to to address the needs of the schools so we can certainly look into that Wrightstown elementary is 62,217 square feet, and the total lot size is 22 acres. Could you repeat that, please? So the, sorry. 52,000 The building area is 52,217 square feet. The lots, the, the total site size is 22 acres. And house track is 72. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, and I just want to emphasize that the hold up with Wrightstown is, and this is crazy to say, but the number of flushes. Yeah. Um, so we can't increase the size of the building because we can't increase the number of bathrooms because of the spray fields. Yep. So if we were to add the, the current number of bathrooms only allows for four classrooms. Um, and that would also have to include renovation to the cafeteria because the cafeteria is not big enough to hold four classrooms. So we would have to pull out the stage and then build a stage on the back of the, um, of the, the gym. So it, it, the, the constraint is not the number of acres. The constraint is the number of toilet flushes. The wastewater system. Yeah. Yes. And that's because it's on-site sewage. Yeah, it's, yeah, we have the spray fields. Isn't there a sewer running down that main road that goes up by those? What about connecting to the sewer? As sewer long as we're at Wrightstown? At, at Wrightstown? Yeah, what's that? Hench bar? What's that? Before you turn by uh, Ralphie's or whatever it's called. Right. What is that? There's an office. Is it, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so there's got to be sewer. And they just, I think that road was, I mean, I don't know. That's, as long as we're talking about things, there's got there's uh, got to be a cost to connect the sewer to city sewer and avoid this problem. But beyond that, connected to that square footage sounds like the right size square footage for an administrative building. But what about the flushes? Are you in the flushes? <laughs> because we don't have as many people in this building or in that potential building as kids, yeah. the flushes would go down. Yeah. So Each person would get a ticket their daily allowance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. Sorry. 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 I really, I really like the idea the that they went down. I mean, but that was a really novel idea that Ann threw out about the new Wrightstown Elementary at Housing Track. That's a, that's a wonderful idea. In the short term, what are we going to do about Wrightstown Elementary's crowding challenge? So right now we have the, the, the capping plan in place. We do have a few kids displaced right now um, this current school year. We're expecting that number to go up a little bit next year just based on the registrations we have. But once again, I go back to, to Cropper's forecast. Um, uh, those children who are displaced will come back to the building. Um, ironically, some families are asking us if they could keep their children in the partner school. And so we've been happy to accommodate them. And with again, with the forecast, we're projecting that over the course of the next two years, uh, we could stay set, uh, we could stay status quo at that building and um, and and keep operating on the capped capacity. So there is no immediate fix uh, outside of adding rooms or moving kids and moving families. And right now the capping has worked well with us the uh, for us and uh, for most of the families who, They've been in touch with us with registration. Good. 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 Um, I, I, I've mentioned this before, and I don't know, I'm up for the work. Can we offer the Wrightstown community the option of choosing a different school as opposed to telling them they have to go there? You have these kids from Northampton Township who are going to a school. Now, granted, now most of them want to stay there because now it's been done for a few years. But it was for every kid in Northampton Township or in Wrightstown Township that says, you know what, I would rather go to Richboro or I would rather go to Newtown. For every kid that moves back is, is an opening for another kid. I don't know what that number looks like, but is it, is it an option to try to alleviate some of the, the, the room? I mean, I, I, I would actually be in favor of optioning, of giving school choice, whether they wanted to go to a north school to a, or a south school, for everyone in the district. Because you know what? It would turn out just exactly how it is now, and it would probably even out very nicely. Uh, they do it in Cherry Hill. It works fine. It, it, they've been doing it forever. Cherry Hill, they choose what high school they want to go to, and they never have an issue. But this is a school that has a problem. And for every kid that wants to opt out, that offers another opportunity for a kid who actually lives in the Wrightstown community to go there. And it gives an opportunity for a kid who lives in Richboro to actually go to Richboro. Or there might be some kids who would prefer to go to Sol Feinstein or Newtown. I'm not that familiar with the neighborhood, sorry. But it, it, is an it is an option that would maybe would temporarily at least help the situation so kids don't get put on a wait list. Is that... We can certainly uh, go back and reconsider that. We looked at that last year. We drilled down um, to the number of houses. We went all the way back to when redistricting took place, and it was approximately 250 or more students from Richboro that were assigned to Wrightstown. Most of those kids have matriculated through right. Wrightstown yeah. by now. So last year we drilled down to... Um, the number of houses and the number of children, school age children by house. Uh, and um, of course, if we put that out there, we don't know what results we would get. But but um, even looking at the, the issues we, we've had with the space there, uh, and we used 
the um, 20 Ford Road mm -hmm. developments adjacent to 20 Ford Road, and there weren't enough children in those houses to make a difference if they were to all choose, um, if they were all to choose Richboro, for example. Mm -hmm. But we can again, we can go back and and look down. I look at it again. I'm not sure the numbers have changed that much from last year, but it's worth another look. Now, I'm just throwing out suggestions because a lot of the people now that I talk to that are in that Twining Ford area and off of Matthew Circle and Worthington Mill, who now go to Town, now that they've been in the system, they don't want to come back. Like, whereas originally they, you know, if they would have from the beginning, but now it may be too late. But you know, I'm just trying to... One of the other things we talked about along the same lines is kind of uh, grandfathering the children who are already there and as a new registrant comes in, assign them to Richboro, so those families, as they um, age through Wrightstown, uh, and when Richboro Elementary is done, there'll be more space there, uh, and kind of do a slow burn, but it doesn't, to Mr. Tate's question, it doesn't give us an immediate fix. Thank you, Dr. Sanka. Nikki. Since we're still talking about the Wrightstown Elementary School, in terms of new, registration coming into this next school year, are we are we capped at like for kindergarten and first grade or ready with what we currently have? We, we some grade levels at Wrightstown are currently capped, yes. Okay, so we know what grade levels those are that are capped. So anyone that's moving in? <coughs> um, I don't want to say that without looking. I don't want to say without looking. Just a question then for... Um. Mike, I'm also glad that we're talking about Wrightstown. This has been an issue for over two years, but for the past two years that I've been on, this has been something that we've gone around this and we find that there isn't the magic bullet, right? The, the community has indicated clearly that they don't want to leave and they don't want their friends to leave or their community to be broken up. Um, and then the other thing that I find is interesting is when a family is moved to a, to a different school, they tend to like the new school. Whether it's going from Richboro to Wrightstown or Wrightstown to Soulfinestone or Richboro, they kind of want to stay in their new school. Um, and so this has become difficult, I think, as you look through, um, you know, how to, how to address this. They have probably needed two to four classes enter the for two years. You are currently the only person in this conference. Oh, um, and but I am I am glad that we're that we continue to talk about it. And it is difficult to think about other renovations without including Wrightstown in this because of how long that community's been patient. And um, and and I, you know, it does seem like as much as we probably all don't like it, the slow burn method seems to be, I don't know, in some capacity working, but I know it's not what the community wants. I know they'd probably want us to put in four classrooms this summer so that next fall it's there, but that's just not feasible, unfortunately. Um, and the, and there, there are a lot of complicated issues with Wrightstown alone, as well as this whole district-wide element. And I think there's some pieces to this puzzle that, that we haven't talked about um, going back to master planning, uh, this is something that an architect could do. This is, but the architect is likely going to ask you, what are your, what are the district problems and what are the district goals? And so the problems are easy to articulate the goals. That's a little bit, a little bit more complicated. And I don't believe that the, our constituents for our nine respective districts and or ourselves would be satisfied with an outside party coming in and saying, here's your solution and having everybody happy. There's always going to be some sort of thing. So we as a community as and as a board would need to be heavily involved in that master plan. And as long as we're going to do that step, to some degree, I think we can, we can as, a, as a board of nine, get through some of this. The goals come back to also the district and how, how the the administration wants to handle that. And that's things like a kindergarten center or a sixth grade center. 
right? So there's these other elements where you look at these other sites and that, that may become in. But one thing that tonight has made clear to me is unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get our value out of any decision that we go through. If we put money in, in Chancellor, we're gonna end up losing money. If we put money in Richborough Middle, for whatever reason, we're gonna lose money there. And if we put money in Wrightstown, and then maybe make a change there. It's 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 the same thing, um, but I'm glad that we're continuing to talk about it. May I go back and answer Ms. Khan's question? <clears throat> K one and two are capped at Wrightstown right now. You make a lot of good points about the master planning process. It, it is you. it is a very detailed, long process that includes focus groups and all sorts of meetings and getting to those big picture goals. And it's, yeah. it's not a simple process. It's not. But that's also what's exciting because this is the, is the doorway to the future of Council Rock, this whole discovery. Yeah, it, I want to go back to Bob's point about, you know, redistricting, which none of us want. But <coughs> I think if we look, if we're looking at a five year plan or, you know, a, a capital the master planning project, you know, that's, there's going to be a piece of that in there. So I think it, 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 we're not doing ourselves any favors by thinking of things long term and not thinking that there could be a redistricting piece in there. And, um, <laughs> At least one neighboring school district is used to um, an annual redistricting process, at least at the elementary level. I mean, you know, I know that's a dicey thing to mention, but I'm glad you brought up the issue. I will say though that the spot at uh, the annual redistricting, that's a bridge too far for me, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Did you, Ricky? Um, right, so then we talked about, <laughs> well, I guess just piggybacking off Tracy's so, so um, comment in terms of like even the spot redistricting, I know um, Ms. Chaiki alluded to it as well for Wrightstown. Um, but getting back to that, just I want to just full circle with the Wrightstown capping. If, if kindergarten, first and second grade is capped for the 2024 25 registration, which is currently taking place now, is there a system in place to communicate this to the Wrightstown Elementary community and those moving into the community or new or never, you know, have children in the district yet? So they're completely unaware until they go to register and get information and they're shocked. So the short answer to that is yes. Um, Jermaine, Sam's assistant, and Sam are in constant communication with, with families and tracking the families. Um, the uh, the communication going out by the principal to the families in, at Wrightstown, it it talks about um, they talk about often about the numbers and then of course when families come to register with us who may not be on a distribution list yet because they're registering new kids, uh, that's one of the first conversations that the family has and then we work with the family through our registration through Nicole. Crawford's office through the Sam Smith's office. And that's where I was saying to the families, to um, Mr. Roosevelt, <coughs> where the families have been very patient and and um, and and have contributed, contributed. I think I would like to go to school X because uh, my nieces and nephews go there or a girl in the Girl Scouts is there. So we have been able to accommodate to some degree. It's not perfect by any stretch, but we have been advertising and accommodating. Thank you. Sure. Well, I think we need on next month's agenda, Chancellor Center and, and Wrightstown and full day kindergarten again, right? For facilities committee. I would agree. <laughs> One more comment. Joe. Um, so when you talk about the cap, having a cap master plan uh, consultant, I wouldn't just take anybody and say, give me one option and that's it. So that's not what I would imagining. And with my experience with the uh, 
with the redistricting, I would definitely set the rules up a lot different than they were. I would say the board will have a lot of discretion in the direction of what these plans are going. So they're going to say, we already have pretty much our goals. We know what we want to do. We want to house our administration. We want to uh, get the full day kindergarten, relieve some of this redistricting. But really, you can focus on all this different stuff. But the point is, they're going to say, these are the ways to do it. And we could probably, if I had the time, I could probably do it myself. You know, and say, this is what it would do. I don't know what it'll cost you, but I could tell you these are the, and we're getting through it tonight. This conversation is actually very valuable. But then who do you pay to go back, take all the thing, put it on a chart and, and start working? I think we're doing a good job at the, at the beginning of it. So, um, but I, I wouldn't think that we'd be fearful of like having to be pinned down, which was almost how we were with the redistricting, the way it was set up. At the end, it just got to... It got it was chaotic, so it's never going to be a perfect process. We're, none of us are professionals at this, and that's a pure example of what it'll be like. But I think we, we'll be able to figure it out. That's all I want to say. So it's not like we're going to just take what an outside consultant says, and that's why I'd hate to think that there's a group behind manipulating this person, and that's what I just don't want to make sure. We'll make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yep. Good. I mean. I would really prefer that we do this internally because we know more than and to bring a consultant now to speed and you know of course we have to spend the money and then we have to explain the priorities. Um, I got the sense of urgency from you today. Is it something that we have to decide fairly quickly? Uh Chancellor Center, I would say yes, um, but the plan or plan these uh, improvements or figure something else out. I mean, unless there are grants that we're not aware of, it seems to me nobody's willing to commit to like six million dollars plus, and I don't think you're recommending that anyway. I'm right. I, I'm not. I'm, I said, well, what's the alternative? That's what you're right. Yeah, right. So there is this, there, I mean, if we, I don't know when is the end of this building, but you can, you know, plan to at least temporarily move somewhere and uh, until we figure out, you know, maybe sell it or donate it or get some, I don't think we need more appraisals, right? So, I mean, at least the decision about these buildings, to me, it sounds like it's almost moot about not using it. I don't, well, I don't agree. No. So what, what, tell me what would change your mind? Well, I, I guess what would change my mind is the cost of the alternative. Like, so it's 16, say it's $16 million here, but to build another place might be 40 or whatever, so then, then it makes sense to stay here. I, nobody said that we are going to have to build another place. I mean, that would cost would be prohibitive. It's 450 per square foot times, even if you do 35, of course we're not going to do that. That is not financially, I, I mean, it, it's a disaster. So if you are to go somewhere else, it's either a building that we already own or you lease somewhere or you buy an old building, which is much less expensive, maybe you can get it for like five million dollars, and then you know, refit it inside. But I just don't see how you can justify spending six million plus and stay in this building. Although my heart is broken by saying that. I, I don't see it. I mean, and if we have to plan, we better at least start thinking about it. I, I was going to say, I think the biggest unknown is the cost of renting. Yeah. And if I think that would be a very valuable figure to have, because I think it your point- It would be very easy to get that number. And, and so we, we preliminarily looked at it. We did not engage a realtor. Okay. Um, and we can, we can certainly do that. Uh, yeah, I, to, I think that would be- formalize it. Yeah, and I, you know, to your point, uh, I don't, the figure in my head, as I said earlier, is not 6 million, it's 16 million. 
I mean, operationally. I mean, I don't see renovating this building and not sprinkling it or, and, and doing the kinds of things that are needed to make this uh, a good administrative center. Because there, we need to make you know, changes in floor plans and so forth and so on. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a really difficult decision. And I certainly, I have no idea where I'll end up on this. <laughs> I mean, the idea of walking away from this, I agree, it's heartbreaking, you know. I, I, but um, I, I don't think we're there yet. Do you, do you think that we should start looking at the other options instead yeah. of like saying, well, we have to get it on the agenda? Just find out what it's going to cost you. That's what I just said, exactly. We, we exactly. need the, the, the rental it. figures that, um, and, you know, um, and since it'll be on the agenda next month, we can talk a little bit more in detail, I hope, about the cost of new construction. Uh, two, two points. Um, we didn't say it here tonight, but Jess articulated it well many, many times since we've spoken about that little plus next to the six million. She has spoken about as soon as we go and dig up you know, around the foundation, she doesn't know what she's going to find. Yeah. Um, which problems. We don't know. <laughs> we, we, we would expect some surprises. And the second is that I don't want to lose sight of what Tony said earlier. I want to echo it. You know, we know we have a real issue at Wrightstown that we have to address that directly impacts kids. Um, this building, while it's uh, sentimental to all of us and it has a place in Council Rock, it's the only building we own in the, in the borough. Um, you know, I, I think that administratively, I'm confident in saying our focus, even though there's urgency with Chancellor, with the water infiltration primarily, um, our focus has to be on the kids that we're taking care of. One last thing. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so this, I, I, mean, I think if we're just, if the thought of donating it, then I, I, if we can retain some string to this building, keeping it, even if you leased it or whatever. I mean, you're just still like partnership. Somebody could come in here and see it for, for something. And of course, I know we're looking at historical societies and all that, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not into giving away assets, you know, even though this might be like uh, a money pit, so you could say, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep working on it. The, um, the, the only thing I would say to that is the portion of the water infiltration, the, the, that six million plus that, that deals with water infiltration, no matter who is responsible for this building, um, would have to, that would have to be paid for. That's right, we need some kind of partnerships going up. It might even be that uh, their payment is to pay for that, <laughs> and we still hold it. And if there's going to be people in the building, you're going to have to, somebody's going to have to foot the bill for the uh, HVAC system because. Um, as I said before, it's it's so old. <laughs> Put it on paper, Trace. I, I just I don't feel nearly ready to give up on the building yet. Um, I would like to. I know you guys have gone down the path of grants to see if there's anything. You know, I, I would like to explore that a little further, a lot further maybe. I would like to explore. Fundraising, you know, what are our options for raising some money? You know, we saw the Newtown Theater did renovations and stages, and they were able to raise a lot of money. I'd be interested in learning more about what they did and how we could learn some lessons from that. I, I just, I'm not there yet. Mike, Dr. Senko, I just thought of another thing. Uh, in an ideal world, is your administration together? Or are there pieces that could be permanently um, hosted around the district? In an ideal world, I would like the administration together. There's so much interaction on a daily basis um, across disciplines uh, that I, I think I think we lose some continuity if we're if we're spread out. So, with that in mind, as we think about looking at the least space. Is there a minimum, a core that you could look at housing in a leased space and having others satellited around the district for, I don't know, in a temporary basis? Who knows how long that temporary basis is? 
Yes, but there's a but to that. Um, there is definitely not enough space around the district to house everybody that's in this in this facility. You know, Jess talked about uh, she and her assistant going to 24 Road. Right. That's only two of in the neighborhood of 70 people assigned to this <laughs> building. Yeah. And as Ann pointed out, that means we have to renovate 24 and, you know. Because I think that that starts to narrow in on the, on the amount of space that you need to lease, if you think about it from that. Unless, as well as look at the whole, to lease for everybody. Um, I suppose that's option A. <laughs> option B. That was just my last thought to kind of bring this around for everybody. Good. Good. Okay. Um, can we move on to look at okay, the upcoming um, agenda? Uh, I just have one item that just developed today and is not a slide item. Um, Dr. Sanko doesn't even know about this yet. So Richboro Middle School, the lift that we approved a few months ago has been installed. Um, I'm going to be asking to expedite the inspection. Um, if we don't expedite the inspection, the inspection is scheduled for May 2nd. I would like to expedite it at a cost of $1,500 so that we can get the inspection hopefully next week. What was that number again? $1,500. It's with Why does it pay for the Why? Because it's the state, um, they have to, they do the elevator inspection. Okay. So right now their schedule is about a month out. So in order to get it, hopefully within the next week, I would like to spend the fifteen hundred dollars to expedite the inspection so that we can start using it immediately well, as soon as a, they inspect. It's an extra fee to the state or something. Yes. Is it okay. is it guaranteed? Nothing is ever guaranteed with the state elevator inspectors, right. but it's my understanding that they typically turn it around in three days. Okay. And wouldn't that be part of like almost the installation? Like you get it inspected and somebody would like that's their job when it gets put in. Well, we should inspect it right away as opposed right. to inspecting it next month. So the state elevator inspectors <laughs> previously have only had about two inspectors for the entire state. Um, we actually have a new inspector on board and he's scheduling inspections. Um, it's unpredictable when you can get your inspections. Sometimes it's busy, sometimes it's not. Um, the company that did the Chancellor Elevator, they turned it around like that. I. I I, I don't have a, an accurate uh, Yeah, response. just. This sounds funny. You get, you get something new and nobody comes to inspect it. So you buy a car and you can't drive it. Uh, we expedited just to. Yes. Can't use it now. It is, we cannot use it. Does anybody in, object to spending $1,500 to expedite? No. 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 Okay. Get it done. It comes next week. Then this is it. Okay. Can, can I raise my hand from. Sure. We hear you. Remotely. Yes. 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 Uh, it's just a question going back or comment. If we are thinking about using a realtor and looking at leasing space, should each department, unless you've already talked about this, should each department be looking at their square footage needs so you at least have that information? You know what I mean? In case we have to, if we're leasing, if we have to lease one building, what's the square footage we're going to need? Or if we split people up, um, if we still know what's, who you could move where based on what their uh, square footage needs are. Yeah, Ms. Stone, we 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 don't know the exact square footage because the conversations we've had, we've talked about. Is it a location that would contain a boardroom? Um, is it a location that uh, that only needs to house uh, a core group of folks, like Mr. Roosevelt was was talking about? So we, we have talked about that. We don't have a solid answer for it um, because yeah. before we know that, we have to 
to determine if and who from this building can go to other locations right now. I was just saying in preparation to at least know what areas we um, need all the pieces yeah, itemized out with square footage needs so you know, you know, storage space, office space. Makes sense. Good suggestion. Thank you. That, that takes a long time to uh, have it all together. That's all. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. What's next? Then? Upcoming agenda items, full day kindergarten, ongoing discussion, slash building discussion, um, filter bid. I know you guys are excited. Um, <laughs> folding partition maintenance, water sampling and testing, uh, water testing and treatment, bio waste, bulb ballast, and battery recycling, environmental professional services, and that's it. Thank you. Anybody else? Any, anything else? Public comment, no public comment. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jess, Tony, Dr. Senko, yes, Ken. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Good night.